guys. And thank you so much for, you know, making the time to be here with us today. I'm really looking forward to, you know, the conversation that we have uh, planned and, and, you know, what we're going to unpack because I feel like the work you're doing, especially around coaching, but also like, you know, just trying to understand the different elements on from a personal lifestyle perspective, which impact our performance. And I think that's a critical gap that nobody has really addressed yet. So I really look forward to picking your brains on that. But before that, welcome and thank you so much for making the time to join us today. Oh, it's a pleasure. Well, thanks for having me, Aska. It's uh, it's uh, it's an honor to be on the famous uh, Aska Patel show here. So this is, <laughs> this is great. You're, you're doing great work, and uh, you know what what you do for the profession uh, is is not something that we can quantify. So I thank you for that. Thank you so much. That means a lot coming from, uh, you know, a leader that I look up to and an innovator as well. So thank you so much. It means a lot. But I feel like the focus today is on you because I think we have to really like, you know, learn about Jason and, you know, what does Jason do? And, uh, you know, you have had a very interesting journey and I'd really appreciate if we could if we could take a moment to kind of uh, you could tell us, you know, how did you start from, you know, becoming a pharmacist to the unique career path that you have kind of carved out for yourself? And, you know, what led you to to this destination that you are? Well, I wouldn't say destination it would be a journey, uh, which is still in progress. But, you know, this pit stop that we are at right now. Uh, yes. So my name is Jason Chenard. Uh, I'm a pharmacist in Ontario. Um, I was uh, born and raised in Sudbury, which mm -hmm. uh, is about five hours north of Toronto. Uh, so rural Northern Ontario, it's home for me. Usually not too many people that graduated from the University of Toronto end up back where I want to go. So that's, uh, that's, that's good for me. Yes. Um, so I, uh, I uh, did uh, a little bit of science here at the university here uh, one year before getting into the Leslie Dan Faculty of Pharmacy uh, and graduated there in 2008. Um, did um, the, the, the probably first half of my career in corporate pharmacy, so uh, mm. retail, mm -hmm. and then transitioned into long-term care, wow. uh, and basically was pushed into the manager role almost from the get-go, uh, which is uh, something that happens more and more often in our profession. Unfortunately, um, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you bet. <laughs> I'm uh, like like many pharmacy managers. Uh, I think um, you know I'm I'm un unfortunately uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, we're 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 not really given much preparation training. Yes. Uh, you know, turnkey kind of moment. You just flip your name tag, mm -hmm. and one day you're a pharmacist, and the next day you're a manager, and you're left to ask uh, what changed and. Yes why am I in charge of a bunch of other things now? Um, uh, people, systems, equipment, uh, all kinds of things, and financials, of course. Yes. Um, so um, long-term care was a, a, a big adventure. I spent six there managing, uh, six years managing mm -hmm. a, busy, uh, a busy pharmacy that served uh, around a thousand nursing home beds uh, in and around Northern Ontario. Um, and then transitioned back to retail, mm -hmm. um, where I currently practice as a pharmacy manager, pharmacist in a corporate setting, and also uh, own two of my own stores with my wife, who's also a pharmacist. Wow. Yeah. So it's a, it's a nice, it's a nice mix. It provides a lot yes. of balance. And uh, I'm, I'm enjoying, you know, being, being back in the retail setting and, um, you know, preventing nursing home admission as opposed to dealing with nursing home admission, I suppose. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, that's fantastic. What a unique journey in a way as well. Um, but, you know, I have to kind of go back to the point which you mentioned about being kind of just put into this role of being a manager and all of mm -hmm. a sudden now you're responsible, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for these managerial duties and responsibilities, which I agree with you, like not a lot of people really understand <laughs> what they're getting into. It sounds really great to be like called a manager, but at the same time, I think uh, people also sometimes, um, you know, pharmacy professionals fail to realize the responsibilities, not just from the workplace, but also from the college perspective, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. all of a sudden you become a DM and then you have a lot more responsibilities. And I think that kind of the reason why I talk about this is because I think uh, that's what you kind of are working with at layered leadership um, and you're trying to create those leaders. But I would love to hear more from you in terms of, you know, how did you end up creating that program and, and you know, what do you really offer through that program that pharmacists or pharmacy professionals can benefit from? Yes. 
Um, the idea that you can go from being a pharmacist to a pharmacy manager and mm. be the person in the building with the most responsibility, um, the least experience, and in some ways, the even the youngest person in the dispensary mm -hmm. is quite a perfect storm. Yes. Um, and I, I knew I wanted to be a manager and the opportunity came up within my first year of being a pharmacist. And um, I had a good group around me and I had support, uh, you know, with um, our, our regional, uh, our regional manager. And I had good coaches that um, was, was, was able to support me through the way. But I think uh, there were a ton of just professional and life challenges that happen along that path that right. you could never prepare for. Absolutely. I, I, I saw this as a gap and naturally I, I'm a writer and naturally I'll journal through problem solving. And, uh, you know, I sort of have a mentality that if I can write it down, it's out of my head onto paper, I'll sleep and then I'll get up in the morning and somehow I'll solve the problem um, when I need to. Yes. And I think through that process, over years of journaling about how to solve the, the problems in the trenches of being a pharmacy manager for over a decade, mm -hmm. I saw recurrent themes happening over and over. And what I did was I put those recurrent themes onto an Excel spreadsheet, broke them down by journal entry, um, and I came up with seven recurrent characteristics of what I was trying to figure out. And wow. I, I, I realized that I was trying to solve if, if there was a profile of mm -hmm. an ideal pharmacy leader, mm -hmm. what would the characteristics of that person be? And I think through the journal, art, uh, the, the journal articles, what I was trying to do is figure out who I should be mm -hmm. so that I can get buy-in from the group and the team together can care for our patients and run, run a good business and be here for us. Yes. Um, so those seven characteristics are what the basis of the website is built on. Mm. I take those seven characteristics, I pair them with a key adjective to make them very specific and something that's uh, less, uh, maybe a little more explanatory or, or uh, a little less vague so I can really hone in on it. Mm -hmm. Um, I put those in an anagram called layered, L-A-Y-E-R-E-D, um, and realized it was a potential platform to serve as a leadership development, um, a leadership benefit the program for pharmacists like me who are trying to figure out, trying to level up their leadership skills. Right. Uh, knowing that there's there is no course in university, right? We're taught to be clinicians. Yes. We're not taught to be leaders. That's true. It's right? very true. We hear, we, we hear a ton about EQ and soft skills and all these kinds of things. And certainly, you can you can go out and you can find courses online. But mm -hmm. I, I didn't really see anything specific to me in retail pharmacy. And I thought this would be a good avenue to at least publish some of this, some of these learnings yes. and potentially help other pharmacists going through similar journeys. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, I commend you for, you know, for taking on this work because I agree with you hundred percent, you know, we do not have enough resources and supports, if I may add, you know, to support clinicians to become leaders. Um, and I think the pandemic, if anything has taught us is the um, you know, the, the critical impact good leadership can have versus bad leadership can have, right? We have seen kind of both sides of the story. And and to make sure that, you know, not only as a clinician, we're responsible for our patients, but we're also responsible for the team we work with, especially if you're in a managed role, role um, or any role for that matter, to be honest, because even as a staff pharmacist, you're kind of like the manager for the day that you're working if there's no one else, you know, with you as a pharmacist. Um, but I think, what you mentioned about the the different layers of leadership, uh, you know, persuasion like hits me really hard. I think as a, as a leader, uh, you know, persuasion definitely has a huge role to play. Um, and when you are mentioning about the layers, can you go a little bit into more detail into what those different layers are, uh, and you know, what can uh, what kind of um, I guess services or or program offerings can can members expect once they sign up for your uh, for your services and your programs? Like, what can they expect from them? Sure. 
it, the so the the, la the uh, website itself is layeredleadership.ca. Mm. Okay. Um, I really think of it as a leadership plus wellness type of platform. Mm. The the reason that the wellness piece is so important is because I've it, it was evident to me, uh, you know, making mistakes, taking on too much when I was younger, when you know we're raising babies in our house. Uh, you know, a, a crazy long-term care job. I certainly, uh, certainly experienced the burnout moments of my career. And I had to learn from those uh, in, in real time. Mm. Uh, I, I remember, you know, going through all the typical signs of burnout, uh, probably about halfway through my, my career so far. So this is maybe seven or eight years ago, um, you know, where, you, you sort of have an overwhelming um, long-term chronic stress that builds and at some point you have nothing left to give. And mm -hmm. I remember, you know, us discussing, this is not the type of dad that I want to be. This is not, um, this is not the way that I'm, I'm going to be able to sustainably lead what's happening at home and what's happening at work. Mm. Um, and at one point I had, um, I had shingles and oh. I had to be hospitalized for mono in the same year. Oh no, I'm so which, sorry. Which was a big, a big, you know, red flag saying yes. like, that I didn't have the wellness piece dialed in. Yes. And, and I what, thought I was a, you know, I was, uh, I was an athlete and I thought I was doing a great job managing the portfolio of life that all of us have to do. Um, and I realized that I needed to put much more emphasis on sleep quality and on nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, and, and over the years of learning how to do that properly, I think I've, I've come to a better role that makes me stronger than I, were, that, that I was before burnout years ago. Right. So the platform itself is a, is a leadership plus wellness platform because to be leaders, if we don't have sleep, nutrition, exercise, wellness dialed in, and it doesn't yes. matter how good we are, how much we, um, how, how capable we are at managing people, eventually that train will derail. Agreed. And, and it, it really has to be one piece. I um, agree. The other thing is what I've found interesting is that the, the seven leadership characteristics, mm -hmm. which I'll, I'll rhyme off in a second, um, were, were congruent in the wellness piece as well. Right. For example, the first uh, the first characteristic, the L of layered is limitless humility. Mm. And I think it's probably the most important one. But yes. in order to uh, in order to make sure that we're sleeping and eating the right way, we have to put ego aside and we have got to admit when things aren't completely optimized. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. There's days in my week where I might cheat with chocolate or something because you have to live and chocolate almonds are hard to, you know, pass Stop. up sometimes, especially when <laughs> stress goes up. Exactly. But if I don't have the, the humility to realize that I was in control of the bag of chocolate almonds and I could have did better there and just blame something else, yes. like blame work, then I'm not going to really figure out the real answer for nutrition. So True. I, I think just an example of how the characteristics come into the wellness piece. Obviously you could see the same about sleep and when we yes. talk about all the sleep hygiene and things like that. But um, so L limitless humility, uh, A is absolute autonomy. Mm -hmm. uh, y is yearn for culture. Mm. E is elemental belief. Right. R relentless systems and structure. Okay. E, esoteric grit, and D, decisive discipline. On the website, I break those down into much more detail. I explain a little more about what I mean and why that adjective is important with that characteristic. Mm -hmm. And then within the website, there's a section on each of the letters. Mm -hmm. And there are the supporting original uh, articles that I wrote that allow sort of allowed me to come up with a conclusion for that characteristic. Right. So there's lots more on the website, um, layeredleadership.ca. Um, and I think, uh, you know, those can be sort of broken down to further, uh, further explain why I picked those ones and why they were so evident. 
Absolutely. No, thank you so much. And I mean, just, um, you know, kind of hearing the the, dif the different layers, um, I can already tell the amount of reflection, inflection that you have done to kind of reach, um, you know, to this, to this this program that you've created. And I wouldn't necessarily, I, I think it would be a disservice to call it a program because I think it's more of um, really a, a wellness initiative uh, because uh, as you rightly said, they go kind of hand in hand, right? It's like how well you're inside, it's what you would be able to, like what your, what your input is, what your output is going to be, right? Mm -hmm. And um, if you're feeling good inside, you will feel good outside. But if you're not feeling good inside, that, that nest doesn't necessarily always work out. Um, and we have seen um, burnout be one of the leading factors right now in healthcare where we're having a healthcare staffing crisis um, and that's just because of the pure burnout and the toll that has the pandemic has taken and a lot of other factors have taken into the health and well-being of our healthcare providers and I think it kind of extends to everyone in this world right now where we are all feeling some sort of burnout and I think um, you know what you have created may not just be for clinicians but I think it's kind of if we apply broader it might be everyone will be able to take a benefit out of it and and you know I would encourage all my listeners to make sure that you at least visit Jason's website and have a look at it because I feel like you know what he's onto is he's onto something very deep and meaningful and I think we really need to take some time to do that reflection within ourselves to truly understand that the career and the path we are on right now is where we want to be and if not then you know Jason might be the person who can help you figure out what's next for you. <laughs> um, because seriously, Jason, like I really, I think we do need this. And, you know, I can, I can tell you for sure, like in the Canadian space, especially, we do not have, um, you know, a lot of resources and supports and, you know, experts like yourself who are able to guide and you know, provide that kind of um, mentorship, if I, if I may say that, um, to kind of, you know, kind of help guide you into, uh, or at least, you know, understand what you're missing or, you know, where you're kind of lapsing so that you are able to address those gaps and then, you know, refocus if you need to. Um, I know in the States, uh, this is kind of more prevalent, but I think in the Canadian space, we do not have that much of a lens. And it's great to have a pharmacist with that lens because who better than a pharmacist to understand what the challenges are of our workforce and our work, um, you know, just the pressures of work. So thank you so much for creating this program. And I think I'm, I'm just curious, like, you know, what type of, of, of training or like, you know, how, how do you become a coach, I guess, is my question, because obviously it's not something that happened overnight. You had like, you know, from the, the program you've created, you've done a lot of reflection on it. So obviously there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of time that was spent and years uh, of that were spent, but I would love, love to. And I think this is more for anyone who's interested in, um, you know, pursuing the path that you have pursued, like, you know, what, what sort of can they expect in this path uh, in terms of training and what were some of the challenges you encountered as you were creating this program you're you're spot on when you say burnout and um you know when i when i was going through something like that years ago um i don't remember that word being a, a topic right yes um I, I remember it almost being shameful that mm -hmm. the boss couldn't handle it yes right? agree um but there's there's been much more positive awareness mm -hmm. and we're certainly talking about it and it's more i'll call it socially appropriate for leaders to have yes. these kind of challenges certainly mental health was always very important but of late we've allowed it to be important yes so it, it's a great time to be talking about the topic mm -hmm. um i'll be speaking at pharmacy u vancouver about pharmacist burnout Yes. Uh, on October 22nd, um, that I believe uh, I hold that as a privilege and a responsibility. I think, um, you know, the research and the work that I'm doing to prepare for that presentation, mm -hmm. I feel is important to the profession. Um, if there's one pharmacist in the audience that I can help because of something that I'll say or share, whether it be from my direct story that I'll share right. or from the lessons along the way that I've learned and what's worked for me along the way, um, then, then I think it's, it's a success, but I think it has much more potential to grow from there. Mm -hmm. I think um, we've, as pharmacists, we've certainly earned the respect we've stepped up in big ways during the pandemic mm -hmm. and the, at least at the legislative level we're starting to see 
um, a lot more uh, positive change come our way. Yes. Uh, in Ontario, we're going to be starting minor ailments prescribing. You know, the list of vaccines that pharmacists can 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 immunize is just is getting bigger and bigger. Yes. Um, I, I think with more responsibility uh, comes more potential for burnout, though. Absolutely. So that means that we have to um, we have to make sure that we're in charge of our mental health. We've got to mm -hmm. make sure that we're doing the, the things that we can within the, the realm where we can control. Right. Certainly on the leadership and the wellness side, there's things that we can't control and we have to be aware of those and we have to forgive ourselves for that. But the things that we can control, we have to have the humility and the systems and structure to figure those things out. Mm -hmm. And then the grit and the discipline to see them through. Yes. And I think that's part of the conversation that we'll have that will start anyway at Pharmacy U and the conversation will go from there. Um, in terms of, you know, training and challenges, I, I will argue that a pharmacist speaking to other pharmacists from experience, from 15 years of experience, is more training than I would have paid for at Agreed. something much more official, let's say, that gives a certificate to somebody. Yes. Um, certainly, I'm not a psychiatrist or mm -hmm. um, someone who's willing to give uh, advice beyond a scope of a pharmacist and a dad and an athlete. Um, but I think in some of the pharmacists that I've provided coaching to, um, there's certainly a an autonomous way of allowing them to figure out their own puzzle mm -hmm. and um i would say that you, you get more out of that speaking with someone you can relate to than you do getting going to uh, a much more official university online course somewhere that's Agreed. not necessarily designed for uh the, the the specific you know challenges that we're facing absolutely I mean, it's kind of like empathy and humility can never be taught, right? <laughs> yes, yes. The other thing that I find is the better we become at sort of outlining our own leadership style, our own leadership identity, yes. the yes. better, the more confident we are in the future because we know how we tick and mm -hmm. we know what our strengths and weaknesses are. Yes. And in knowing that and, and having the confidence to address future problems with those systems and structure that we develop, we actually become more empathetic to what we're going through and we become better bosses, we become better healthcare providers, and we become better, you know, at home as well, yes. because we know ourselves much better. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think uh, you, you hit the nail right on because I, I really do think, you know, I think it's more of being able to speak with somebody who um, not just shares, but also is able to understand, right? Um, uh, the, the challenges and where you're coming from. Um, and also, you know, you may, we all have different journeys in terms of what our challenges may be. But I think, as you mentioned, like layered leadership, like, you know, there are those overarching principles, which, you know, kind of apply and extend themselves to solve a lot of the problems that we may be facing. And um, I think what you're offering as a service is, is fantastic, because if anyone is ever finding themselves in in, in a situation where they're not able to see a solution or uh, to a problem that they may be facing or a challenge, um, you know, at least now they know who to go to um, if they, um, you know, if, if, that's, uh, if that's something that they resonate with. Um, and I think um, while we're speaking of coaching and, and you know, kind of uh, what you offer, what are your expertise in coaching? I think you kind of briefly touched on it, but uh, I would love to see if you can expand a little bit on that. Mm -hmm. I would say um, of the pharmacists that, that call uh, locally because they mm -hmm. know me and you organically grow your network in, yes. in the community that you live but certainly um, word of mouth and uh, you know being available at conferences and things like that certainly allow it to grow beyond that I would say that um, others probably reach out for um, one for staff team building type of mm. discussions um, I think people are our most important piece of our puzzle. Yes. And, um, you know, in, in, I think the best way to sum it up is uh, Jim Collins in his book, Good to Great, 
kind mm. of puts it this way. Um, get the right people on the bus, get the wrong people off the bus, put the people in the right seats and then drive. Yes. Otherwise what happens is you get, you get hours down the road with the wrong setup and then you have to make U-turns. Mm -hmm. So the team development, hiring, recruiting, coaching, hiring internally, development of people and, and putting the right personalities together um, SWOT analysis, this type of conversation seems to be a theme that comes up mm -hmm. that, um, I, I, I'm, I, I've grown, a, um, a bit of comfort in, um, being good at helping to coach other pharmacists build for, um, so I would think that's a big bucket is the sort of team development, hiring process and developing mm -hmm. all the systems and, and the right sort of, um, conversations or having them prep their language for yes. their meeting, their, their uh, coaching, you know, I, I, I might get a call with someone who has a pharmacy assistant who is making repetitive errors despite coaching. Uh, and we talk through what needs to be done that way, mm -hmm. how we can support this person, how we have what, you know, and how they fit in with the rest of the team and things like that. Awesome. Um, we also talk about, you know, how to, how to hire, how to interview, what's mm. the, um, what are the types of questions that we ask? How do I do this without making a ton of embarrassing cold calls and wasting my time with interviewees that, you know, are, are I mean, just looking to uh, sort of um, just looking for something to start and then leave in six months, right? Agreed, agreed. So, so for sure, the I'll call it the people bucket. That's that's the staffing piece has, uh -huh. has come up quite a bit. Uh -huh. um, the other piece that's come up is uh, is the system structure. So the workflow development, the automation piece. Mm. Uh, you know, I think long term care has given me a ton of experience in a in a fast way. You're you're, you know, in a job that has you do three thousand prescriptions a day with nursing homes all over the place and electronic MAR and a bunch of different systems and a bigger team. Mm -hmm. um, I think you, you, you develop a real comfort and appreciation for the power of small systems. And when you can figure out how to do something perfectly at the small level and yes. allow it to scale, then what happens is you, you can develop a system where other people autonomously make decisions. Um, they feel more empowered. You have less sick time because they're in charge of things mm -hmm. that in tune saves you so that you can put the thought and analysis into the things that only you can do. Yes. And having that, those people in that overall system turn over like a flywheel in the wind without you yes. is, is the magic that a lot of us are requiring that usually a third party pharmacist who knows what you're talking about can help you as a third party non-observer who is not entrenched in the emotional detail of that pharmacy. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, no, this is, uh, that's fantastic to, um, to see that you're able to provide this expertise, because as I mentioned, you know, I think um, these are the challenges that they exist um, at a lot greater scale than we are aware of. I mean, it's every pharmacy has these challenges at some point in time in their journey, right? Um, but at least now we know who to go to. <laughs> Um, if we ever run into those challenges and, um, you know, I, I, and really that's the purpose of these conversations is, you know, we want to make sure that we are, we're highlighting any pharmacist who's doing such at least catering to these unique niches, which, you know, we require all the supports, but may not know where to go. And I'm, I'm just hoping that through this conversation, whoever's listening, um, you know, if they, if they, now they at least know that they, there is somebody who is able to listen to them and, and provide some solutions and help them work through those solutions as well. Um, and I think uh, you had mentioned about the people bucket and, and uh, can't go, uh, you know, kind of also want to uh, reemphasize that you'll be speaking at the Pharmacy U conference in Vancouver, which is fantastic because burnout has been, as you rightly mentioned, it was not something we spoke about until very recently. And that was because of the crisis that's kind of ongoing with healthcare professionals. Um, and I know we'll be hearing a lot more about it from you during that conference in Vancouver. Um, but in the same time, I think, you know, 
I guess if we can peel a layer of it, just one layer of it, if we are able to, and again, I'm not going to put you in a position, but, um, you know, if, what do you see as a core issue, um, you know, beneath burnout? Like, and you could speak this from a professional or a personal level, whichever way you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. The, the topic of burnout is, um, is, a widespread complicated one because mm. it involves many pieces of an overall puzzle mm. and and addressing one piece alone usually isn't enough to solve the problem or prevent the problem right um, so i would say that there's within the leadership scope of a pharmacist day um, the, the, the main problems that, or the biggest repetitive challenges that we're having are, you know, increased workload and responsibility yes. with, you know, a lean staffing model in a profession that's getting harder and harder to find, coach, mm -hmm. recruit, and maintain top talent. Yes. There's a variety of reasons for that. Um, some of them niche to their own community and others uh, widespread across uh, across Canada in pharmacy. Right. Uh, but having to do more with less is certainly the the um, the the big theme. Um, and there's also the um, the pressure of the public, the expectation yes. going up. Um, that has been increasing for a long time, but we're in a system where, or we're in a profession that requires us to make sure that we're pulling more of our weight coming in the future mm -hmm. because the healthcare system is going to require us to. Yes. It, it's, it's a very stressed system that is very complicated and the pharmacist has always been critical, but I think we've, we've shown that we're even more essential than we thought we were. Yes, I so agree. I love that wording. Can I steal it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are more essential than we even thought we were. <laughs> but no, it's true. Um, and, and, you know, it kind of, um, I, I agree. Like, I think the future, the, the coming future is going to be definitely more demanding from us as a profession. And, and um, I think now is a time to kind of do that internal check and inventory of making sure that not just you as an individual, but your team as, as, a, as a whole is, is ready to embrace that upcoming change and that demand, right? And is able to keep up with that. Um, and I think um, if we're able to prepare ourselves before the storm, it's so much better than, you know, kind of navigating the storm while it's going on. Like it, it I think it's kind of um, survival uh, tactic 101 as you, you prepare ahead of time, you're, you're so much better to sail through it rather than, you know, kind of preparing it as it comes. It much, makes it much more difficult and um, the, the concerns become then you're losing your team members because there's just way too much chaos. And we, we saw that during the pandemic, right, where a lot of staff was leaving because they were concerned about their safety, about their well-being and everything else. So um, I think this um, and I guess. So this is where my one other question is, and um, you know, as I see you as an expert because uh, you know you you are uh, an expert in this area. You have done a lot of reflection, and I really admire that. Uh, but like, is there one thing you can share for any individual who is dealing with burnout of any sorts? Um, you know, one thing that they can do like right away before um, you know, kind of to get the ball rolling and in, in addressing that burnout and you know, creating a plan of how they can overcome that. Like, what would be your advice on that? Certainly for someone who is in crisis or feels that they are in imminent burnout, mm. um, don't wait, Get make a phone call. Right. Whether it be a, an employee assistance program that your employer is giving you that you don't know about, right. ask someone around you who you trust. You don't even have to use the word burnout. You might use the word overload or overwhelmed but these are all normal words that we shouldn't feel ashamed to use. Um, certainly, if you're looking for help in phrasing that, or you're unsure about what your reputation or job will be after that conversation comes mm -hmm. up, I welcome you to, to, to reach out to me and we can discuss how to bring that up because right. it's very doable. I've done it myself and I've had many people that work with me that report to me come to me after I said it about themselves. 
whether they're pharmacists, regulated technicians, um, assistants, front shop people, it happens. I'm better at recognizing it within my own staff for going through it myself. Mm. On the website, you can fill out a form. Uh, there's a few forms along the way on the website. There are mm -hmm. simple forms that will come directly to me that I'll respond to. Mm -hmm. um, in the various areas, as you're navigating the website, you'll see a form on the leadership side for coaching. You'll also see an electronic form for the wellness side okay. because we do some coaching. We do nutrition coaching and we also do sleep coaching. Wow. Um, and those forms can be filled out and we go through those. Um, if, if there's something urgent, the um, pharmacists.ca, the mm -hmm. Canadian Pharmacists Association website has some key resources with links to various pharmacists in various provinces. Yes. So I, I would say, don't wait if you feel that the weight on your shoulders is heavier than it might be or it used to be. Uh, act now. Um, that, that's critical. Um, the, the work, the hard work is done in the prevention mode. Of course, the treatment mode needs to be dealt with immediately. Right. But the hard work and the focus of the pharmacy you talk will be the prevention, mm. uh, the prevention pathway. And what can we do at work? And what can we do at home? Because one helps the other. Right. And when we talk about work-life balance, <clears throat> I'll argue that all of the effort that one needs to put in is on mm -hmm. the life side. Because when we deal with that, then we often show up better at work and the problems that we have are problems as opposed to conflict. Yes. So the one thing that I would say, if someone's not, you know, we're not at the stage where someone's, you know, active crisis. Okay. I would say the one thing that most uh, pharmacists that I talk to need mm -hmm. to, or can focus on to get immediate relief would be get some sleep. Right sleep tonight and we talk about sleep hygiene with patients all the time right we know what right are. We know exactly right and meals before bed and consistent schedule and caffeine and alcohol and we coach this every time we dispense zopaclone and other things and when people are asking us for sleep aids otc yes and then we go home and we spend two dollars you know two two hours on our phones <laughs> We have a big meal at before bed because we haven't eaten, we haven't been given a break for a 12 hour shift, right? Exactly. And then we go home and we rehash the, the trash of the day to our spouse. Yes. They don't sleep well. We don't sleep well because of it. So we need to focus on sleep. I'm more than happy to provide coaching in those areas. Um, for me, I have a sleep tracker and I've been doing a lot of work. If you're following me on Instagram, you'll yes. see post. Uh, you know, it's, um, findings of what happens when I have a drink, have a, have coffee at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. What I've seen those. <laughs> eat late, right. And you'll see how that affects my heart rate. You'll see yes. that affects my REM. You'll see that how that affects my HRV. Um, so a sleeping high priority as a pharmacist, a dad, a, and a triathlete, I know that if I haven't slept well, I have to reshuffle the day. Yes. So the work that the, the, the product that we're going to put out today fully depends and is correlated on how I slept last night. Wow. That's incredible. And thank you so much for sharing that. And that was actually something that I was going to urge my viewers to also do is follow your Instagram page because I have been following it for a while now. And to be honest, I, I love the little tidbits you share there because uh, if anything, it has allowed me a point of reflection for my own self, you know, in terms of looking at my own habits and be like, oh, wait, did I do this last night? Yes, I did. Okay, let's try. And it does make a difference, right? Um, it does make a difference. And, and I think that's why I was like, you know, let me see if I can tap into this expertise today. So this was, this is great. Thank you for sharing those tidbits because um I, I agree nutrition sleep and and as you mentioned like you know if we are able to understand and like you know the life circumstances will be there and I think we also need to take a step back as clinicians and understand that work is a part of our life but it's not our life right um and I think sometimes it's it's very difficult to make that distinguish uh like you know create a boundary between the two because we are so like you know when you're working 12-hour shifts back to back it becomes 
difficult to detach from that and, and, and you know, understand that this is just a component of my life rather than my entire life in, in its entirety. And that in itself can also help us manage expectations a little bit better in terms of, you know, where we're going for what to kind of feed our emotional and, and you know, philosophical, like psychological needs that we have as human beings. Thank you so much for sharing that, Jason. And, and I think um, I'm really looking forward to your pharmacy you talk. If I'm able to attend, uh, it'd be like, you know, if, we, if there's virtual options available, I would highly encourage everyone to register. If not, we'll be looking out for your pharmacy, um, you know, Canadian Healthcare um, Network's um, articles that you also write there as well. And, and, you know, you share some great advice there as well. And your website is also a great resource. And we'll be linking them all down in the description box. So feel free to check them out. Um, but I mean, and feel free to reach out to Jason at any point in time. Um, but before we let you go, Jason, I think, um, you know, uh, as a pharmacist and a coach and an athlete, I, I really admire what you've accomplished and, and, you know, what you're currently providing as a service to our profession. I think it's, it's so much needed. Um, but I think I cannot let you go without asking a few questions about, um, you know, where do we see the future of pharmacy the fu uh, and the future pharmacist? Uh, but before we get into that, I think, um, you know, as somebody who has, as, as I see you as somebody who has really, um, you know, navigated the, the difficult path of choosing a non-traditional route um, per after pharmacy um, and, and, you know, any advice you would have for anyone who's looking to follow your footsteps and, and you know, um, how to navigate that non-traditional pathway, career pathway. I think um, there are, uh, especially when we're stressed and especially when we're unrested mm -hmm. and we're not, uh, we're not focused or completely dialed in on nutrition, we're a little biased to ourselves. And we certainly, the, the negative um, thought side of our brain certainly takes over and it ends up being a cycle. Mm. And I think if we can somehow disengage from that piece and um, honestly look at our seven layers, mm -hmm. it, it gives us a fresh view and an unbiased view. And it allows us to do much more than what we ever thought we'd be capable of. Yes. I, I look at where I was in my career and where I was at home, um, you know, five or six years ago. Mm -hmm. And if you would have told me then that I would maintain the corporate piece, but also have an independent ownership piece in my portfolio, and then also um, raise our two children and race three triathlons each summer. Wow. And also coach both their kids' hockey teams. I would have thought that wasn't possible. But when I was able to figure out my seven characteristics and what they meant for me at work, mm. and when I was able to pair that with sleep and nutrition and exercise, mm -hmm. I, was, I realized that I was much more capable than I was, was giving myself credit for. Right. Um, in terms of where that takes me in the future or other pharmacists, I'll never know. Um, but I do see the pharmacist as continuing to spread into the patient care aspect of what we do, mm -hmm. doing much more clinical work. There's probably much more mental health, disease management type of training where mm -hmm. we are acting in a more blended prescribing caring role, somewhat like a physician appointment-based seeing patients yes, as opposed to dispensing drugs. Agreed. I think that I, we need to continue to empower the regulated technician to, yes. to make that happen. And we need to give them the tools and the support staff like the pharmacy assistant and everything else up and downstream but at the end of the day, the pharmacist that is willing to put themselves out there and continue to tweak their, um, their practice to be able to see patients and engage with their long-term follow-up in, mm -hmm. in managing their health, I, I think that's where we're going. And we're moving away from, you know, 
putting a torvastatin at HS yes. in the blister <laughs> and making sure that the copay gets waived. Yes. And pointing out the Q-tips in aisle five. Exactly. Right. That's, Agreed. that's certainly something that someone else can do mm -hmm. to save the precious time that we have and use our experience, knowledge, and skill in the right way. Absolutely. But I think we're going in that way. And if we don't have ourselves figured out, our own leadership identities figured out, and are supporting that with a wellness foundation, mm -hmm. then we're not going to get there. And we're going to complain about it the whole time. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I couldn't couldn't have worded that worded that better. And thank you so much for sharing that. And I think you kind of addressed a few of my questions, which I all asked you in one go. So sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I guess to wrap up this conversation, uh, you know, you kind of mentioned what the future of pharmacy looks like and, and, and you know, it's like, how do you envision the future pharmacist uh, five to 10 years down the road? Um, and, and, you know, as a pharmacist yourself, would love to hear your, your vision on that. I, I think that there's a, a greater separation from the pharmacist and the dispensary. Mm. And I'm not sure if that means the pharmacist is actually out of the pharmacy themselves. Right. Right. Or in an office within the same building. Mm -hmm. But I certainly see the pharmacist as a little more hands on with the patient as opposed to hands on with the drug, if that makes right. sense. Yeah. Right. OK, awesome. Thank you so much, Jason. Uh, you know, this was this was fantastic. And I really appreciate you making the time to have this conversation today, because I think what you have shared um, through this conversation is provides an invaluable resource to a lot of pharmacists. I mean, I definitely learned a lot of things just from this conversation. And obviously, following you on Instagram has been an eye opening journey for me as well. So thank you for continuously posting that content because uh, people like me benefit from it. So thank you for that. Look forward to your talk at Pharmacy U in Vancouver uh, on October the 22nd, correct? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I'm hoping that uh, if they would have a virtual option, it would, it would uh, you know, it would help a lot more uh, than just folks in Vancouver. Um, but that's, uh, we'll, we'll figure that out uh, at a later point, but we'll continue to look forward to your content, um, you know, through the various channels you have us, along with your website. And I, I really do hope that, you know, people will tap into your expertise to kind of help give that reflection that they that we all need from time to time to make sure that we are able to refocus and realign with our, our goals that we have in life, not necessarily just professional, uh, because I feel like life is a lot bigger than our profession itself. So thank you so much. And uh, it's been a pleasure, uh, an eye opening uh, conversation. And I, I, I can't wait to see all the cool things that you'll be doing in the near future, because, uh, you know, we need you. <laughs> Much appreciated, and I'm uh, I'm sure you're going to get eight hours of sleep tonight. I definitely will. <laughs> <laughs> no coffee after 4 p.m. That's what I learned. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jason. With that, we'll be signing off for today. But I really hope that we'll we'll be able to have you back on another time. Uh, but till then, all the best with your conversation, and uh, we look forward to learning from you um, as we go forward. And thank you for your time again today. All right, and with Thanks, that. Oscar. Thank you, Jason. And with that, we'll be signing off for today. But feel free, make sure to stay tuned for our next episode, which we'll be releasing um, in a week from now. Bye-bye. <laughs>